Let's try to solve circular array rotation. We have an array as an input, and we're going to have a set of rotations. And this is known as a rotation operation, where every element shifts by a certain number of positions. So let's say this is our input, 3, 4, and 5. The input is A here, and K is the number of rotations. So at first, we have 3, 4, 5 intact, that is after 0 rotations. After 1 rotation, 3 shifts to index 1, so now is the second item here. 4 shifts to index 2, so it's the last item. And 5 shifts to the beginning, that is index 0. So now we have 5, 3, and 4. And after the second shift, because k is 2 here, so we need to do 2 rotations, 4 shifts from the last position to the first one, 3 shifts to the last position, and then 5 here, which was at the beginning, after the first rotation, now becomes index 1, right here in the middle. We have another parameter in this coding challenge. It's going to be a parameter for the function. It's called queries. So in this case, queries has 1 and 2 as the values in the array, meaning that we need to return index 1 from input A here, this array, which is 5. And we also need to return index 2 from input A, which is 3 here. So 5 is at index 1 in the final array after k rotations, which is 2 rotations. And 3 here is at index 2 in the final array here. So here I have my function. The input array is a vector called A. The number of rotations is the integer k here. And the indices for which we need to return the values from the input A, they are stored in this vector called queries. So at first, because I have to return a vector of integers, I also create a vector of integers that I'm calling v. Now, k here could be any value. If you go to their constraints, they say here that the value of k can be anywhere between 1 and 100,000. So we could have an array, for example, this vector here. The inputs could be of size 100, but k could be 75,000. So of course, that would be an out-of-bounds index because it's far larger than the size of a here. So to try and control that issue, I'm using the modulo operator. So here I have k modulo the size of my input here. And this will immediately constrain the size of k within the size of a here. I want to refresh your memory on how the modulo operator works. For example, 1 modulo 3 will give you 1 because 1 is the smaller operand. If you do 2 modulo 3, you get 2 as well. 2 is still the smaller operand, but when you do 3 modulo 3, you get 0. If you do 4 modulo 3, now you get the remainder, which is 1. And if you do 5, you will get 2 as another remainder. But if you do 6 modulo 3, you get 0 again. So it's starting all over again all the time, and the values are always 0, 1, 2. Meaning that when you run this operation, the value of k will always correspond to the indices from a right here. So if a is 3, k will always be either 0, 1, or 2. So I'm having this for loop right here, and I have a local variable here. At every iteration, I want to grab what is the value of the current item in queries minus k. We know that k is within the size of a now, but queries index i at first can be 0. So if you look at queries right here, they say that at index i, queries index i here can be 0 all the way until n. And the value of n is excluded because this is a 0-based value. So the value at first of queries can be 0. In this case, if I have k is 2, for example, let's go back all the way to the top here and use this as an example. So queries is 1 and 2 here, meaning that at index 0, queries, the value there is 1. So this will be 1 minus 2 because k here in this example is 2. So when you do 1 minus 2, you get negative 1. So we check here, do we have a negative value? If we do, then I'm going to return the size of a plus queries minus k. So remember, like we said, queries index 0 at first is 1, as you can see here, k is 2. So here we are saying a dot size, a here has three values, 3, 4, 5. So we are saying 3, 
plus negative 1, which is the same thing as 3 minus 1. So in here, if you do 3 minus 1, you get 2. So from there, we're going to grab A index 2, because 2 here, what we just computed, is going to be stored in original. So we're going to grab A index 2 and return it for the first value in the rotated array. This here, index A, is the original vector, so it's 3, 4, 5. And then here at index 0 for queries, we got the value 2, because we checked here, this is a negative value. And when we calculated here, we got the value 2, meaning that for query index 0, the first value that we have to return is the index 2 from the input array A here. So index 2 is 5. That is the first value that I'm going to store inside of my v vector right here. So I have v and place back a index 2, which is 5 according to this. And if you look at the answer here, they say a1, 1, 1 corresponding to the first value from the queries array, is 5. So we have the same thing here. When i in this loop becomes 1, index 1 now, then we're going to have queries index 1. In this case, it's the value 2 here. So we're going to have 2 minus k and k is also 2. So 2 minus 2 is 0. So this is going to evaluate to false, meaning that in this ternary operator, this is not going to run. Instead, this here is going to run. Whenever you're doing subtraction in programming and you want to be sure that you don't get a negative value, you normally wrap it inside of the ABS function, um, and this is to get the absolute difference. So now I'm getting queries index i minus the value of k queries here at index 1, it will be 2. So we get 2 minus 2, which is a 0. And 0 modulo the size of A. If you check here again, let's try to be sure, 0 modulo 3 is 0. Meaning that from the original array here inside of A, I want to grab the index 0 and store it inside of my V vector. So index 0 here is 3. And that is the second value that we need to store inside of the vector. So that vector eventually is what we're going to return. Now, this method here might seem a bit messy to you, but it's actually quite efficient because this is solving this coding challenge with constant auxiliary space. We are not having any external vector where we store values after we rotate, and we don't have nested for loops. Instead, we have a single for loop, and we compute this directly without actually rotating the array. We just use basic logic here with the modulo operator to directly grab the value inside of our input A based on k rotations using the values from the queries array. Let me run this code to see if we can pass the first test case. We did, so now let's submit it. And we have many test cases, 16 test cases, and we've passed all of them. So I'm sure we did with reasonable time because this is a fast algorithm. If you like my solution in C++ and you want more practice, I recommend that you check out my other videos. I have this other tutorial called Save the Prisoner in C++. It's a hacker rank solution. And this here also covers how to go through a range in an array using the modulo operator. So you can check this and also get my code on GitHub. But for now, I guess this is it for this coding challenge, circular array rotation, and I'll see you next time.